What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to the Iowa Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your, ho- your host, Raul Espinoza. And today with us is Brett Stiles with Swordfish Creative. Welcome, Brett, to the podcast. Good to be here. It's my first time at Uptown Garage. So, what do you think it's about it? It's pretty cool. I keep saying to my friends, like, dude, we got to go up there. Yeah. And we, we haven't yet. But I think this winter, when it's like, it'll be we nice can't and go cozy. outside and whatnot. Yeah. We love to just play like board games. I got a couple guys that love to play like Catan. Yeah. It'd be fun just to come up here like on a Sunday night. Are they open Sunday nights? They are open on Sunday, and I think they're open till eight p.m. Okay, yeah, yeah, it'd be fun just to come up on like a, on a Sunday night. And yeah, if you guys ever plan that, and- you just check their Facebook page, and they'll have their hours up. But it the Delt Hand, have you ever heard of them? I've seen their. That's like a board yeah. game truck, right? It's like a board game truck that's local here in in Ankeny and um, Central Iowa, and they just drive up to businesses on a certain day and bring like the coolest, most unique games you've ever seen. And that's it's, it's cool. really interesting. I would love to have them on the show one day. Yeah, that's um, awesome. But that's that's why people come in. It's not just a place where people come and drink, really. It's more of like a, a place where people can come and just engage with each other and, and enjoy something that's pretty unique to the community. Yeah. So that's what attracted me to it to begin with. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because it, by the way, Uptown Garage, thanks if you're watching this for sponsoring the podcast. Um, Alpha of Social Media as well. And, um, but this used to be a, did you know it used to be a Ford dealership like back in the day? Like a dealership or I did, or like a garage where like no, they worked well, on cars? Well, they, that was, okay. So before Uptown Garage, it was like a, a garage. It was Miller's Automotive. Okay, yeah. And now before that, I believe it was a, a Ford dealership showroom and mm. they would bring up, pull up the car. So like over behind us where Porchlight Coffee House is, cars would pull up in there. And this would be like the shop. Wow. It's crazy. And that's why hmm. they think they went with that. Yeah. You know, that's really theme. cool. So they wanted to keep a lot of the history. And, I was wondering when I saw it. the mural, the new mural in Uptown, yeah, why it said Ford. Because cool. yeah. I was like, how does Ford, I, I thought it would be, I yeah. thought if anything, Ankeny, it would be Carl. Oh, true. Like Chevrolet. And But then I, I read about how Ford, this used to be like a Ford. Oh, yeah. Something well, with Ford and it made sense. And when I'm from Oklahoma, so moving here over there, Ford was pretty huge. Coming here, Chevy is huge in Iowa. I'm noticing. Yeah, especially but, locally. And so there's always that, you know, I remember when the mural was coming up, coming up and I showed my wife the rendering. She's like, why is it Ford? You know, because her dad's always Chevy, Chevy guy. And um, it made me laugh. But it's because of the history with the building. Yeah, so, that's really cool. And that's what's really cool about that. Um, and they'll do live shows and all that, which is, is just really neat. And um, you know bingo nights and yeah. that sort of thing that's why i like coming but and this um, is a sh- this is a, a shameless self-plug but they need to do like a video with the artist who did the mural so that like some of that meaning can yeah. get out there because i don't think people in the community know that no and see here's the a whole thing. bunch of my friends were thing. like what does ford have anything to do with it yeah so they need which to get might, that out there a little bit we're actually going to have alex mortensen which is the gm of uptown garage in one of the episodes and he We'll explain a little bit more about that. Oh, yeah. Um, and the reason behind it. But also, he might be the one that has to do it because, you know, I can't get into too much specifics, but the guy didn't want, he wanted to remain, remain anonymous. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's I'm really sure cool. he had his reasons, but yeah. that's really cool too. He didn't want the spotlight. He yeah. just wanted to do it for the community here in Uptown. That's awesome. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. He doesn't want to do like a video they do on like Dateline where he's all black and his voice is like a monster. <laughs> yeah, he's like, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know these guys, yeah. um, but one thing I did want to ask, and what what this podcast will mostly be about is the lifestyle of the entrepreneur and how you got started. You know, whether you own your own business or your own personal brand, what got you into video? Um, I so I guess it was just like when I was a kid, like my friends and I, we would just make videos. Um, yeah, and how then, young were you? You think? Oh man, the first video we made, I mean, these weren't necessarily like these were home videos. Homemade like video. um it was a workout video oh, nice. that I made with a buddy of mine. I think we were probably in like second and third grade, maybe younger. Cool. Did it have music um, with it? Did you put some music on there? No, we didn't have any editing ability at the time. So we okay. just would record it in the camera and then just play it, yeah. you know, off like the tape or whatever the camera recorded on. Wow. So we were like lifting soup cans and I think we were wearing underwear on our head and like it was <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Um, That's funny. But as far as like seeing it as like a career path and something that I want to do, yeah. it was when it was probably like when I'm in the middle of being in college, um, I just felt like 
That's you just something. knew you had a talent for it? Not really that. More just like I enjoyed doing it. Gotcha. I enjoyed trying to think of like if I see an image or like a shot or a picture in my mind, like yeah, trying to recreate that. Gotcha. Um, but it's not. Um, I would Which, say that that's a journey. Yeah. In the sense that in the beginning, that rarely ever happened. So I'd see something in my mind. Oh wow! For a project or whatever. Yeah. Certain, and and but then I would do it, and it would not turn out. Oh. Because like you, it takes time with everything to develop skill. Well, and sure. So that just kind of pushed me for a little while. Like I didn't do anything with it. Um, okay. You just kind of made videos and I know I didn't even, I just, um, so I think it was like 2011. I did some projects in college and it just you. didn't, they didn't turn out like I wanted. I gotcha. And I, it, part of it was because my lack of technical knowledge on what makes certain things look certain ways. And part of it was just a lack of skill. And so I felt well, discouraged and, and by that. Well, storytelling too, right? I know that's pretty important with, with yeah. video. Um, would, would you consider yourself like a, a storyteller or are you just, do you picture like so the that, video you're going to do before you even do that's it? That's kind of, the storytelling part's kind of new for me. Okay. Since, okay. since getting into it like for like as an entrepreneur. Gotcha. Before this year, I was just like doing it on the side or kind of yeah. whatever, you know, if people needed something like doing it, not actually thinking as specifically about like, the specific stories sure. to be told yeah so yeah in the beginning it was very much just like a something that i love doing um but i was super discouraged in the beginning oh yeah that i couldn't create what i saw in my mind i think mind. that's everyone too at first they're too scared to they, they think they won't be good enough you know and then once they get into it honestly i think it's just time and just doing it and doing it every day then you realize like someone starts to say the first time all it takes is the first person to say Dude, you're actually really good at this. And you're like, no, everyone denies that at first. Yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of people who, are, if you're creating anything, you yeah. feel like an imposter. Exactly. Like you're faking it. You, and that's I mean, I still feel like that to this day sometimes. Yeah. Um, I see like there's always someone doing something better. Yeah. And so it's very hard to find the balance of like trusting that you have developed your skill set and that you do have, you know, a skill set that's valuable and that, you know, there's value and worth in and that you can sell in a sense, True. but also keeping the mindset of like, you know, I haven't arrived. There's so much I can yeah. still learn. There's so many, there's still so many people doing things better yeah. and unique and cool and different. It's a very fine line to walk there well, to guard yourself against over confidence yeah. and, um, yeah. and like I agree discouragement. Well, and I think that's what will make or break your career over time is, People get too stuck in the rut on in on social media, for example, and they're just like seeing all these people that are so great, you know, that sometimes, you know, it's either real or fake type lives on there. Really, it's, it's hard to know, but you get so stuck and focused on other things that are the other people are doing that you get discouraged. And then you're like in that mentality, your mind starts to go against your, you know, your heart. And then you're like, man, I, maybe I'm not cut out for this. So, yeah. So that was me um, from like 2011. Okay through like 2015 um i didn't I just worked wow. I worked a job in broadcasting doing like radio and tv stuff but all on the post-production side okay so like not really sense. picking up a camera at all um and then like in late 2014 early 2015 i did some stuff projects for work that I helped out on yeah started to like uh, there was a guy there that was working with me who started to teach me a lot that i hadn't learned in college okay started to like dig in for myself to the camera that I did have at home, mm -hmm. um, watch YouTube videos. Um, and then in 2015, I moved from Chicago back to Des Moines and just decided with me and a buddy of mine, like, Hey, let's just try it out. Let's just yeah. do it. Um, and see, I um, think, would you say that's what it takes? Like I always tell people just, if you really do have a passion for something, just get started like next day. I mean, you, yeah. I don't know. What did you guys get started with originally? Like, it, it you kinda, didn't have all this great equipment like you do no, now. No, we just had two really low end cameras and yeah. two monopods. That's all we had. And someone came to us and said, Hey, um, I'm looking to give a wedding video to a friend of mine. Yeah. Do you get would you be willing to shoot it? I can pay you two hundred bucks. Wow. And was that your first business transaction? Yeah. That was the first thing we ever Sweet. did. Um so we're like the, I had moved from Chicago to Des Moines the day before. Wow. So the day after we moved, I went to shoot this thing. 
Um, I'd it's never, crazy. I'd been like, I had a wedding video done for myself, so I kind of knew and I'd seen so many of them, but I'd never yeah. shot a wedding before. Um, Were you nervous? I wasn't super nervous because I knew it was a gift. Gotcha. And that they there was low low and low expectation because it was so like they were only paying 200 bucks that's true but i was still nervous at some parts oh yeah because yeah. um, it's someone's wedding like that's yeah there's no redo deal. no um, yeah you can't hey let's reshoot the yeah, yeah, yeah. The video for yeah stop the ceremony and say could you kiss again like i, <laughs> yes. I missed it wow um so yeah that was the first thing and um went from there and they loved it um awesome and we just were like okay let's Let's, Let's see where we can this. take this. It started out, we started out doing mainly weddings yeah, um, and okay. then just transitioned from that into, we did a couple of things for some businesses and then, you know, you know how it goes, like it kind oh, of snowballs. Dude, and, it, you go from one thing to the next because you're, you become a yes man at that point because you get excited Yeah, and, and you just want to do as much as you can. And doing more is what helped me to learn how yeah. to do more better. Yeah. Um, in like shooting something, getting back into editing it and seeing like, of course, like it didn't turn out very good. And then researching and being like, okay, how can I actually get get it to look this way? Yeah. So that like it's kind of a um a, a cycle in a sense that yeah. like the more you do, the more you'll learn and the better you'll get at, yeah. in everything. But especially with what I do, the more you can get your hands on and get behind the camera, the more you'll figure out, yeah. or the more I figured out how to recreate what I see. Um in my mind. And yeah. so the documentary that I did this summer was really the first time that I had sat down and done like a long term plan for the story, the visuals, everything. Was I, that your biggest project you would say to date? It was my biggest project to date. Really? Usually a lot of my stuff's like run and gun. Oh, yeah. I'm shooting as it's happening, kind of getting what's going on. But that was the first thing I'd ever done that was a lot of aspects planned out. And I would say it was one of the first times that um, my vision in my mind came to fruition. It just played out. Yeah. I was able to, what I planned on doing and storyboarded out, I was able to create um, almost exactly. That's like the best feeling. Yeah. It was one of the first yeah. times. It's one of the few things. I mean. So would you say you're proud of it? That's one of the few things I'm proud of. I, this, it, it sound dumb, but I usually hate everything that I do. <laughs> I think that's everybody. Um, and it was one of the few things. And when I went we had a review process with them. And so they reviewed it four times before it went live. Okay. Yeah. And the first time we went to review, I told them, I said, I feel way too attached to this. So you didn't I try want to, to stay, even watch. I try to stay detached from sure. my work because it's easier to take criticism when you're not attached. Well, and you're your own worst, you know, critic. Yeah. What would you say? Critic. Yeah. 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 You're so your, your worst critic. If I'm if I can stay like with a healthy detachment and someone says, oh, I don't like that shot. I yeah. don't think that looks good. The color here is off. I'm exactly. not offended. So I went into yeah. it and I just knew like I feel way too attached to this because <laughs> it had just gone. So, it had all come together so well. And I think that it, it worked out. They only had awesome. the, through the whole process. I think we went we had two changes um, wow. over 45 minutes of of footage. I think uh, what was it? Almost maybe a month or so ago, I saw like a teaser of it or something. You posted something, or maybe it was the full thing. Yeah, I can't remember. It did got posted like a month ago. Yeah. How long was it? It right under forty five minutes. Under forty five minutes. So like forty four thirty or something. And so what people don't realize, and for the listeners out there, it took how long to film this and make it to fruition? Um, it was probably like between a hundred totally all together, pre production, production, post production, between a hundred and fifty and two hundred hours. See, that's crazy. And that's what people when you know, sometimes you come up to and you're like, This is what this costs. They just see the four they think the forty five minute video or the thirty second video and then, then they don't think of all the stuff that you do. So Yeah, so there there is a lot that huge. goes in behind it, um, to and I should say it doesn't have to be that way. Well, people, true. You can pick up a camera and make a video. Yeah, you know, and there's very sex successful people out there that yeah they just do use their phone every yeah, day and exactly. they have millions of followers. Um, so it's just, but it really is just based on, and that's where this year I've started to get more and be more um, drawn to the storytelling aspect. Yeah, whereas to some people they're maybe much more drawn to like just making a video that's showing some visuals. And obviously, I think everything's telling a story, but for me, thinking about the content above necessarily how it looks was hard for me, but it was a good, good challenge. Yeah. Cool. Um, I just read yesterday, I think someone said 
someone has said or tons of people say like uh video is the throne and content is the king that sits on that throne wow it's interesting um so to think about it that way content is king yeah um cool. So I, I'd heard that all over, like content is <laughs> yeah, king, wow. but I'd never heard the idea that video is the throne that it sits on Wow! in our world today. That's true. Um, Would you say video for now, for businesses listening to, um, how, how important is video to the modern business today? Um, I mean, it, obviously I'm biased. Yeah, well, sure. But, but we, we, you, you need to, for someone on the fence, they know, they yeah. kind of know, but how, tell, tell them so, something that would actually... I think hit, hit. I think the stat like there's all kinds of stats you can sure. find and yeah. like I I'm not huge into just like throwing stats at people because oh me neither but like say, uh, what's one thing you could say to yeah so I'll preface it with this they say a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still there's That's nobody cool. who doesn't want to think that it's important that I'm gonna make think it's important it's just not gonna happen no but for people out there who are genuinely seeking and maybe wondering the the piece of information that impacted me the most was that um, some market researchers found that people remember 16% of what they consume through text. Oh, so wow. they remember 16% of what they've read and 66% of what they watch. Huge. That's why That's... you'll meet someone who they can't tell you, you know, they can't remember the last thing they no. read, but they can quote office lines. Like not, like it's nothing. Yeah, they remember the episodes, they remember the lines, they remember movie scenes. I love because the office. People remember what they watch. That's true. So I think that stat is sad in a sense, yeah. but it also says a ton to people who own businesses or are trying to get a cause out there or trying to do anything where they want people to remember them. How yeah. are people going to remember you? I think you can really. I remember I forgot where I read it from, but you can really alter people's emotion. Yeah, visit for the, what they see. They put yeah. themselves in that person's shoes. It's a lot easier to connect. Yeah. Um. And so, in any, I mean, in any area, whether it's for profit business, whether it's not for profit, whether like it's anything, cool. you people want to be remembered. And yeah. how does that happen in 2019? Watching things. That's true. And so that, I think that's the main thrust of kind of when I meet with people or when you know. We well, have yeah. these conversations. And you see it in the social media world today too with TikTok and Facebook and all yeah. that's all turning into vi video. Yeah. Because and, it's works so well. Yeah. And I I would if I was if someone's listening and they were on the fence, I would say like you got to start. Um you might not necessarily have to start by going out and paying, you know, a firm 20,000 yeah. to make you a 30 second TV commercial. That might not be the way to start, but you yeah. have to find a way to start because it's costing you more. By not doing it exactly, um, because it, like it's just continually being adamant that the the way that you do things is working. Like that's you're gonna it, it'll it's gonna pass people by. Yeah, in the same way that a lot like we see it in retail, not necessarily related to video, but we see like stores that refuse to adjust are gone. Oh, yeah. You but, saw that with Toys R Us. Yeah, but a store like Kohl's, who now at Kohl's, you can take your Amazon returns in to Kohl's. Yeah, I didn't know that. And they get returned for you. Wow. You don't even have to box them. That's crazy. You just bring in your returns. That's an example of what I think there's some people out there who are like, well, you know, video for them is like a couple layers down. They're like, well, I got my website, my blog. Yeah. And which, if that's how they want to do it, fine. But the, I think in the end, like they'll end up like a Toys R Us or whatever. I think so. Because fall behind. Yeah. They'll yeah. fall behind because the everything is saying that, yes, website, content, all that's great. But the delivery method for all of that, the number one delivery method is video. Yeah. Um, and it can't be ignored. Very true. And I'm a big believer in video, um, especially ever since I graduated college back in 2013. As even then, it was already kind of booming. But I wish I could go back in time even more to like 20, 2006 or so when YouTube started coming up and everything. I wish I, you know, created back then. Oh, me too. It would just be awesome. Yeah. We, you know, take when I was advantage in, of everything. When I was in middle school, my friends and I would make Star Wars fan films. Yeah. We'd get out my backyard and do Dude. like, we'd choreograph broomstick fights. I bet this so is many like, would have gone viral. This but. is a level of nerd that most people have never reached. <laughs> yeah. We'd get broomsticks and we'd, we wouldn't just like fight them. We'd choreograph. Be like, really? okay, here, here, here. Oh, then you're going to do this. 
And I had like a program on my computer at the time called LS Maker. It was for Windows. It was like a lightsaber maker. Wow. And you would draw on the lightsaber blade onto every frame. Wow, that probably took a while. It was, but I like loved it. And yeah. that's kind of what let me know like that I enjoyed post-production and editing and because I would sit at my Very computer cool. and draw all that on. Um, but I uploaded them to MySpace way which, back. Oh, man. Which at the time, all my friends were on MySpace. And so that was True. the place where we could all see yeah. it. Yeah. And now I wish MySpace. that I had uploaded it's to funny. YouTube because those are all gone. And I'd love <laughs> well, to like, yeah, show them to my- Well, yeah, who knows now what yeah. the views would have been since then. And I'd just love to show them to my wife. Like, she, like yeah. just so that people could see how ridiculous. And, so you still like, have some of them? I don't. They're all oh, gone. Oh, no. Because that would be awesome for your business now. Yeah, just to, to just show like, and be like how Dude, we, this is yeah. a really hilarious throwback. Yeah. Here you go. So we we do have some. So in college, I did. We would do like fake music videos. Gotcha. So we would upload them. We would like play rock band instruments. Yeah, to real songs, and we like we did one at the Nevlin Center. And then the, um, wow, and that was very we, close we put, by. We put those on YouTube, and uh, I think one has like forty thousand views. One has wow, like that's cool. 30,000 and then we have we did like a Miley Cyrus cover but we did it like heavy metal and that is like 111,000 so I'm like man that is awesome if I could have just like so yeah there was a time when we were more like (laughs) me and my friends were more like yeah let's make videos and put them on YouTube that's kind of subsided for me now um, but that's one where that's the main area where I need to grow is like producing Mm -hmm. content for myself because yeah. I can't espouse it for everyone else to do and then I was gonna not say, do it myself. That's one thing I wanted to talk about since it's a lifestyle, entrepreneur lifestyle podcast. What would you do? I mean, what do you think work, does work-life balance even exist to you? Because, you know, you got so much content you got to create for everyone else. You don't even have some time to do it for yourself. But then, like, what about your family? So, I, for me, it, it's a huge thing. Okay. Um, and that's probably, like, I'm not a user of social media which is where like yeah. some of the content um, it could be is tough for yeah. me to create. Like I don't personally um, engage, like obviously I have a Facebook page and I have True. Instagram through Swordfish Creative, but I don't like engage personally in those ways. Yeah. I don't post. Which I think it's very important. Um, I don't do a lot of that. Um, yeah. And it's not because it's bad. It's just because I've never really connect, like been into it. Yeah. Um, so that's where I think I struggle even thinking about like uh, doing a Facebook live of me, like doing Dude, some editing. It's, it's not, I, at I, first it's so weird, Yeah, but it, it's just like with your videos, it's over, eventually you just, yeah. it's, it's like talking right now. Yeah. So I need to get better at that. But for me, like work-life balance, um, I treat my, like my entrepreneurial business like a, like a nine to five. Um, okay. And it's hard, but it's, I just, my kids are three and one. Yeah. And, um these years when they're super impressionable and oh, yeah. like you have to be there they never get back um and i don't want to i don't want my kids i don't want my kids to be 14 and 16 and hate being around me yeah because i didn't put in the time when they were you know makes sense. 0 to 11 um so it, it it does make it tough there's a lot of nights at least recently in the last couple of months where i'll work you know like a regular job like i'll be mm-hmm. at i work at a blue bean um, so I co-work out of there and, um, I'll work there eight to five and I'll get home. And then like at nine 30 or 10, I'll go into my basement and go back to work. Yeah. Um, work till I'm trying to do less of that. Cause it just, I'm not 20 anymore. I'm not old, but I'm not 20. <laughs> and I could tell like, if I don't get sleep, I start to get Sleep's sick. Very important. Um, but yeah, so I keep it very That's unique. I try my best to keep it super structured and really not have yeah. a ton of it's hard with my phone that's my biggest one of my biggest struggles is i need i need to start doing better when i get home phone goes in the you drawer just shut it off or yep. move it. yeah um but i'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs aren't that way where yeah. it's just like all the time for them well but for, me, for me it's, it's all the time but i think kids makes a big big difference there yeah so, so it's super structured for me of like almost feeling like i i just work for a company yeah i just work for swordfish creative um so very true. And for you guys listening, all that sound and everything, we are in a brewery. So we're going to get a little bit of that before we end here. But um, one thing I do want to talk about is Swordfish Creative itself. Like real quick, well, how did you come up with the logo or what created that? Is there a story behind Swordfish or is it just something you guys were like, Swordfishes are cool. So we're going to I wish there was a that. story. Oh, um, really? I think thinking <laughs> about it. So when we started, had the idea, I was still living in Chicago. My buddy was still living here. Okay. So we're like, I knew I was going to be moving back. 
So we're like, well, let's, you know, let's start something when I get back. So we started thinking of a name. Months went by and we yeah. couldn't come up with one. We'd come tough. up with a couple ideas. We'd researched them and they were either related to something that we didn't want to be connected with or. Hey, of course. So eventually we just said to each other, we need to just pick something <laughs> because we're not going to get. like an object or an animal. Yeah. So we both okay. just brought one. He brought swordfish and I don't remember what I brought. And I was like, oh, let's just go with it. So I think the story behind it is just, just start. Yeah. Just do something. That's so We were so, so tied up in like picking the right name yes. and, what, and yada yada that we yeah. it was probably two or three months that we didn't do anything because we didn't have a name. Yeah. And it was just like, so I think that's what it represents is don't worry as much. And now I might be contradicting my own self on the idea of like, you know, tell a story and all that. But for us, it was just like, yeah. we just need to get started. Well, and that's what's super important, I think, is, is just people have asked me before too because I just want people to know it. you can do it. Like anyone really could. If is, is it for everybody? No. But everyone I think could just get started. Yeah, start somewhere. Yeah. Start somewhere. I think that's kind of maybe what it represents. Um, I think so. And cool. then in the beginning, we were had our logo was more like an actual swordfish. And okay. then at the beginning of this year, we rebranded to the logo that we have now that's yeah, like kind of like a now. combo of it's it's an S and an F combined. Yeah. It's, it's kind of tough to see. I've had, I got mixed reviews I like when it. I first designed it. Some people said like, I hate that. I Some like people it. were like, oh, that's cool. So that's where I recognized it was um, when I first went into Bluebeam to check it out. I noticed it on the, on the window there. Yeah. Our, our so office. So I'm like, oh, that's where they're at. Yeah. Cool. So, that's an example of something that I did and I liked. Yeah. And then my, someone close to me was like, I don't think it looks oh, very I good. Oh, I think even and family, I was just like, just, they're going to say, there's going to be so many mixed reviews on yeah. everything. Yeah. That's where, again, the mentality goes in it, into it. If you love it, don't worry about what other people yeah. think or yeah. other people do. Yep. Because then it'll just, then you start doubting it and you're like, crap, I already paid so much money for this. It's already up on my window. Yeah. yeah I can't yeah. rebrand. Like, yeah. So I just know. was like, you know what? I like it. And I want, like, if I like it, I'm good with it. If, if other people don't like it or whatever, I'm not going to worry about it. I feel good about it. Um, so cool. I went with it. And at that time, we split off. Swordfish was doing a lot of weddings and, yeah. you know, all that work. We split off and sent all of our wedding business over to another company that we started. Gotcha. And that's, we call that Covenant Films, more Covenant. of like a wedding brand and all that. Oh, gotcha. Um, but yeah, so um, it was, yeah, so this year has really just been kind of my first year. Yeah. Even though Swordfish has existed since 2015, this is my first real entrepreneurial year. Awesome. We got started really heavily in, in April. Yeah. Um, of just trying to. Um, well, that's what's cool to me is like seeing you grow since I've met you is super awesome and like the community starting to engage more into video and like you know we're not exactly in Des Moines we're in like a suburb so it's going to take a bit longer but it's starting you can see it starting to, you're going to be a part of all the innovation which is cool yeah. seeing all that, that yeah you're hopefully in. and so. I think there's a lot of cool stories that exist in our community of course Ankeny's still kind of like a good old boy town. it is no one knows a lot about like the deep history of yeah it. and there's super people cool. that have like super cool stories that oh, yeah. um people know but yeah like if you you know in the, in the sense that Ankeny is like almost 70,000 people but there's times when it still feels like 20,000 yeah so how do we you know start to get some of those stories of people who exactly you know were here when it was 20,000 and were integral in all the development that we see yeah. today and all that I think those stories definitely can get out there and be told and I think that's I think there's opportunity for that and it's really cool yeah and that's why like there's a gentleman here that owns a, a furniture store his name is Dave Hikes He's one I want to bring to the show just because he's been around when it first all started. Same thing with the flower shop down the road, Carmen's yeah. Flowers. So I think this will help with that. But visually speaking, I think people need to grab someone like you and be like, hey, can you just kind of follow me here? And I can talk about what it all, yeah. what, how it all started. Yeah, yeah, you for know, sure. Which is really cool. Well, um, Brett, before we end the show, I did want to ask one really cool question that I think we can do at the end. and it's. It, what would you say to someone, like one piece of advice you'd say to someone mm -hmm. that is at their job, they're just, they're listening to this podcast, they're not happy, they, they know that they'd rather, you know, go knit all day long and make like a YouTube channel for it, but they're too afraid of the safety net they have at, at work. Mm, what, yeah. What's one piece of advice you would say to them that, so then, you know, because then they'll have regrets later on. Yeah. Possibly. And, and that's one thing that's really important to me is I don't want to have any regrets in life just do what i love to do yeah. so what would you tell someone like that that maybe wants to get started with video and they're just scared um 
I would just say kind of like, like, you know, what swordfish represents is just start somewhere. So yeah. be honest with yourself and evaluate your situation. Not everyone is in the situation where you can just quit your job of course. and become an entrepreneur. So if that's not the situation that you're in, um, find something that you can do. So if it's, you know, if you have a phone and almost everyone does figure out a way, okay, I can, you know, I can start to do this. Um, I tell that I meet with some of the students at, at, um, through the Ankeny school system at sure. from Orbis. This is like a class they can take where they get to like kind of meet with businesses and do kind of, um, non-traditional school methods. What was it called? Orbis. Orbis. Um, the guys who run research. it are the guys who run it are really cool. They'd be some great guests. They're awesome. doing school in a super non traditional way, and it's very unique. Um, and it's I think super beneficial for students. I'll have to look into it. Um, Sounds interesting. So I talked to some students there and just said like, what held me back for four or five years was I felt like I don't have the equipment. Gotcha. Um, I think that's I think at first. I think that a good way to get a, get over that is just to say we have so much available to us on our phones and whatnot. Just yeah. start somewhere. There's several free apps, you know, yeah, you can there's download, apps that you can get. Um, you know. And if you can, that's where I kind of did it backwards in the sense that I wanted to learn all the tech. I'm a nerd. So I wanted to learn all the tech Stuff. side first. Yeah. Yeah. When really, if you can learn the storytelling side and how to, you know, bring out that emotion and connect with people, that's right. Then all of the, all the technical stuff can come second. That's true. Um, I think that's the advice I'd give give someone is just start creating, um, because that's what's actually going to be the best teacher. That's very good um, advice. I've seen work from people who went to film school and it's trash. Yeah. Because in film school, it's a lot of theory. So, you know, I'd say do whatever you can just to start yeah. creating something. As long as they have a, a love for it or a passion, right? Yeah. And whether it's video or whether it's, I mean, making music or whatever, exactly. like just find a way to start creating something and then that will actually start to take you down the path of what it takes to start doing it better. Cool. Well, um, if someone were in the local area here in central Iowa, how could they reach you? What's a good way to maybe go check out your content or? Yeah. Um, probably just like Swordfish Creative, at Swordfish Creative on Facebook, at cool. Swordfish Creative, Instagram um swordfishcreative.com it's kind of unique um in the sense that it's swordfish with no vowels gotcha um, i was wondering that so when you send me it's a email. little bit different um but okay. that was the way that i could get dot com and that was just something different like yeah i just as i was looking at it one of my favorite bands um their name is paris but the a is upside down that's true i've seen that and i was just like oh that's kind of unique what if i yeah. did something with the vowels here to make it different than just swordfish creative awesome um and for so you yeah, guys really listening we'll put media. it on the description as well so it makes it easier for you later on to uh, follow his content and uh, well we're gonna go ahead and end there brett thanks for coming by yeah this is awesome and, and thanks for being a part of it i appreciate it